Okay. Linda, every movie has scenes that are cut out. Mm -hmm. Now, I read you have a twin sister, mm -hmm. and you shot a scene where they brought her aboard. Well, can you tell me about that and mm -hmm. uh, your sister's reaction to movie making? Yeah. Um, I think that it opened her eyes quite a bit. She had a, a hard job to do. Came in really only for three days, and then came in later, a few months later, to do a, a day's work. Uh, but uh, she's she's made it into the movie. She's there, and um, actually, my agent and manager thought she was the one in the front rather than the one behind. So nobody knows how she you know how she was used in the um, steel mill at the end when there are two Sarah Connors. She she plays one. They were planning on doing it with process, but. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a twin. Now there's another scene where you were taking a microchip out right. of uh, the head. Now what happened with that scene? They're, they're, weren't they going to try something fancy with that? That was fancy. It was great. Um, I admire Jim for being able to take such a good shot out of the film. It just didn't serve the film time-wise. There was a whole sequence that was taken out um, where we performed surgery. And, had, and she played the mirror image of me. So it looks like we're shooting into a mirror, but it's actually my sister and I doing the duplicate movements. Now, let's go back to the first Terminator mm -hmm. for a minute. Mm -hmm. Now, this film, a lot's been written about the large budget. Mm -hmm. Now, the first one, was there a lot of pressure when they were making the movie to bring it in on budget, on time, and how did that affect the folks making the movie? Um, I, my impression, and I don't really know the truth of what was going on behind the scenes, was that it was much more tense making the first one even being a low budget picture, they were all over us about, you know, not shooting one more scene in this future sequence because we were running over and blah, blah, blah. Uh, this one, if there was that kind of dialogue going on, it was going on off the set. Um, obviously, we were all struggling to get the job done because it was an enormous job, but we didn't feel it as, I, it did not impact nearly as much on the set. On the first film, when you found out that Arnold was going to be your co-star, mm -hmm. was there any hesitancy or reluctancy on your part because he wasn't really known as, as being an actor? Yes. Yes. I think I was inclined not to take it as seriously when I found out it was Arnold. Up to then, he hadn't done uh, you know, any significant acting work. I, I hate to be snobby, but um, you know, uh, it was hard to, to relate to the vehicle as, you know, as anything that was really important and I didn't realize how good it was until it was done. Now, a lot's been said about the physical training in this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you about lifting weights and all that right. stuff. But the, the, we the weapons training as opposed to the weight training, mm -hmm. which was harder, not physically, but emotionally for you to do? The weapons training. Um, you know, you, you get the gift of getting to look at your muscles change and your body, you know, uh, being sculpted differently. With the weapons training, it was just a whole different mindset that I had to find. And um, I resisted it. It was very hard, very hard to be in a position of, um, you know, somebody else in a position of authority and working with weapons that, you know, you're not comfortable with. It was tough. When you saw the script for this movie mm -hmm. and realized all the special effects, uh, the huge budget, mm -hmm. were you ever a little bit nervous that maybe, and it didn't wind out that way, but that the budget would over, or the uh, effects would overshadow the story? Um, well, I think that the effects were written well, so I, I wanted them to all be done and be successful. But yes, I was worried that the movie would be, uh, you know, bigger does not mean better. I thought the first one worked because it was so bare to the bone, and I was worried that the second one was going to lose that. And the second one didn't have the powerful story that the first one does. You know, it doesn't have the twists and the intrigue, but it has more um, message and more power, and I like it just as well. And it does, in the end, have a feeling of being rather bare to the bone. It tells the story, it gets the job done. I've also had a big interest in how uh, people react to actors on the street and mm -hmm. how they identify, they identify with the characters. Yeah. Now, after the first Terminator film, did you find that you'd meet men and they'd have some kind of instinct to protect you? Or how, or how did men react to you no, on the street? No, mm -hmm. nobody wants to protect me. Yeah. I think I look like I can handle my own. Uh, nobody people did respond to the character. And everyone thought they were being very clever by saying, oh, you sell Connor. You know, every single man in the world thought that they, <laughs> this was their own line. No one had ever said it to me. It's very funny. Uh, and we're doing a story on mementos, the type of uh, things that actors and actresses keep from movies. What mm -hmm. kind of mementos have you kept over the years from your films? 
uh, I'm not very sentimental about holding on to things, but uh, from Beauty and the Beast there were some wonderful clothes that just meant a lot because they were underground clothes. You know, Catherine goes and lives below for one episode. That meant something to me. It was a real growth show. Um, and just to touch them reminds me of the underground and the beast, and you know, that was a real home to me and a place of comfort. Okay. One quick question mm -hmm. in talking about Beast. Mm -hmm. I interviewed Sally Field recently, and we talked mm -hmm. about movies that, that people will do, and afterwards they're not quite sure maybe they should have done that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your attitude about the, the King Kong Lives experience? It was a dreadful movie. Uh, it was a dreadful experience making the movie, but um, we learn and we grow. I mm -hmm. have no complaints. I, I'm glad that I've done everything, single thing I've done. We had nothing in that movie but a big blue screen to look at. And when it came on, I mean, when I saw it, I just went, this is so stupid. But so what? You know, it's still a good exercise. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks, Ron. You're, You're speaking welcome. just the right amount of sound bites there. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs>